Today we are going to discuss a chapter from your alternative English uh, poetry section. We are going to discuss chapter 5, The Human Seasons, written by John Gates. In today's class, let's see what we are going to discuss. In today's class, these are the important points that we will be talking about. Number one here is, we are going to discuss who John Gates is. John Gates, as I've already mentioned, is the uh, writer of this particular poem, we are going to talk further about the life of and also the works of John Gates. Then we are also going to discuss the structure of the poem, how the uh, poem or, or how the poem has been written. Then we are also going to talk about the poem that is we are going to talk about the meaning of the poem. So these are some of the important points that we will be focusing on or we will be talking about in today's class. Let us start with the first point, who is John Gates? So let's see who John Gates is. This here is a picture of John Gates. He was born in the year here. He was born in the year uh, 1795 in uh, October 31st and he died at a very early age of here. He died at a very early age of 25. This was in February 23, 1821. Now, uh, when we talk about John Gates, John Keats is an English poet. He was a romantic poet of the second generation. Now, romantic poetry is again divided into two different generations. The first generation is where we discuss uh, William Wordsworth, uh, S.T. Coleridge, and other poets. And in the second generation of uh, romantic poem or romantic poetry, we discuss uh, poets like John Keats. We discuss poets like Lord. Byron and also Percy Bysshe Shelley or whom we uh, fondly call P.B. Shelley, right? So this is about our poet, John Keats. As I've already mentioned, John Keats, he died at a very early age of 25 of tuberculosis. And, uh, and also see, John Keats says, in earlier times, you do not need much education. Academically, so John Kitts also wanted to try his luck as a surgeon. He practiced for it and he, uh, he was under the apprenticeship or he was under the teaching of one Thomas Hammond. Thomas Hammond ko wamagi makada surgeon oira me ko maase, but he gave up. All right, John Keats gave up his profession as a surgeon because he was so much more interested in literature. Literature ne hena pa me ma ko. And so therefore, uh, at a very early age, at a very early age of like 18, 19, he started writing. He continued literature. He was a very good friend of James Henry Leigh Hunt. If you remember James Henry Leigh Hunt from your uh, standard nine poem, the, the one that you read, Above and Adam, the Eva Poito. Aduga, close poin a tinaramiko. So, uh, as you know, James Henry Leigh Hunt was a publisher. Publisher, in a sense, he was the editor of a newspaper called Examiner. Examiner, Sida Masu. Poetry ke ka e naba adhumayna James Henry lehan ka tinara miko. So anyway, so from that part, John Keats, he started getting his interest. He started increasing his interest in literature, especially in writing poetry. And as I've mentioned, John Keats died at a very early age of 25. 25 they say, but however, he wrote in a very short span. Mana literature ira miba, mana poetry ira miba gi span se only four years khata ni ko. Four year gi span se da how many poetries did he write? He wrote 50 or sorry, he wrote 54 poems. Imagine. So anyway, so that is John Kids. This is about John Kids. Let's see how he writes. Or magi writing style this will be easy for. John Kids here. During that very short span of his life, he devoted his life to the perfection of poetry. 
he wanted a perfection in poetry and his poetry is mani ira meva poem could you say it is marked by vivid imagery we know what imagery is right imagery is the way a writer writes in which the reader can create a mental image right so vivid imagery me ama ma yawi ko mental images create over yaba then he also wrote or his uh, the content of his poem also had a great sensuous appeal not only this he also attempted to express the philosophy through classical legend classical legend yam parame kuma thai ne gi writer sin adu gumba yam na pam jara me adu gumba moi gi classical legend ne phongdo amba philosophy me am do ma gi work to so express to ningba adu gumba gi wakhalon do phongdo ami ko ma gi works that anyway so that is about john keats this is his writing style and if after reading this poem see the poem se paba loira kan da no john keats ki writing style se pa me kan ga hai ra ga su ko john uh, john keats ki matang de hena khangni ne hai ta ra ga su these are some of his famous writings mane iramba ya na popular oi ba poem si ni ko if you want to know about uh, more about john keats these are some of his works then you can go and learn more about like here or to grecian urn gumba then or to a nightingale and his first poem that is edimion sigisna nan kai gumba john keats se hena further in a khangni ngi hai ta gadi sigi poetry sing se you go through and you read through it all right anyway so that is about our poet john keats let us learn about the poem what is the poem about to hana khangji ko before we go into the text let us see what the poem is about So what is the poem about? The poem, the human season is a sonnet. John Keats ne ira miva the human season se sonnet ni ko sonnet hai. Badi kaino we all know what sonnet is. Sonnet hai se standard ten dege, a standard nine dege tam abba po ni ko sonnet hai se kaino hai bese. What is a sonnet? A sonnet is a short poem consisting of how many lines? Consisting of fourteen lines. Right. So this particular poem written by John Keats is also a sonnet, and he wrote this sonnet when he was at Tegmouth. Tegmouth, how is it? England, we can almost call it town. Almost call it what? Man, see the town. See the lady. Guy, the second week of March, eighteen eighteen. The High River poem. Say, e. Can you believe e? No, how can that? Why did he write this? He wrote this because he wanted it to be published. and he gave this to benjamin bailey benjamin bailey he uh, also used to uh, he, benjamin bailey is very popular in the other so yamna mamin labor media ko ma se in kerala he was a very first person who uh, who uh, established or who who first came up with the printing press printing press han bo in puthoki ba se benjamin bailey in niko kerala anyway he owned a publishing house publishing ki thabak ta we do do na John Keats na Benjamin Bailey the March 1818 the magi high river se ki sonet se chithi amagi form the p e ba ko kai you know because he wanted Benjamin Bailey to uh, publish this particular poem all right anyway so but the poem did not get published in the year uh, 1818 but it was published in the next year in the year 1819 Now, when you look at the poem, you will see that the first of the two verses, because the poem, the hand bahor of the line, and he says, "See, see the poem. See the tapping is a kind. No, have a hand line. You will see. You will find it here. The verses explains the contents of the poem. He compares the four seasons of a uh, natural year with the several stages of human life. John Keats, na tauri se high river poem. See the kind. No man, na tauri se high kind. See the Natural se natural season. So he is mother labor. Natural season. Mary say he is going to what? What is he going to do? He is going to compare it with the several stages of human life and by extension the several different workings of the human mind in the different stages of life. So that is what he is going to discuss in today's poem. Let us look at the poem first. We will discuss the structure, and then we will move on to the explanation or discussion of the text line by line. Okay. Now this is the poem in its entirety. Poem is seen. As I have already mentioned, this is a sonnet, a fourteen-line poem, a short poem consisting of a fourteen line. And we have discussed that the poet that is T. S. Uh, sorry, not T. S. Eliot. We have discussed that John Keats is a English poet, and therefore, man, iri ba sonnet se. This is the sonnet is in the English form. See, say, kari form the lege har kande English form the lepo. English form. 
It is written in the English form or what we call Elizabethan sonnet, Haragazu Kangnava, and more popularly, Shakespearean sonnet. Kai gino hai kanda mamang da kuinit tam ki bido. Shakespeare wrote 154 sonnet and he followed the same structure. All right, so this is based on the English form or the Elizabethan sonnet, also called the Shakespearean sonnet. But there is one difference that we're going to discuss. Difference so kai noi yang siko. Anyway. So like all English sonnet or like all Shakespearean sonnet, the poem is also divided into two parts. Part any thokna kai do ego from here, sorry. It is divided into two parts. From this part till here is number one part. This is called quatrain. Quatrain And the last two lines is what we call a couplet. All right, so this is the structure of an English sonnet. English sonnet could mark part ani thona khaido kani part one will be the quatrain and the second part will be the couplet now the quatrain again is divided or will be divided into three different parts like here part hum thona mu khaido kani which means that there will be three quatrains and each of the quatrain will be of four lines each loina bak line mari 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 loi oi gani ko so these are quatrains and all the quatrains they will have alternate rhyme Line amaga, line amaga, or alternate, alternate line, alternate line, loin bak rhyme tau duni ko. And lastly, the poem will end with a couplet, and couplets are uh, two liners that ends with a rhyming sound. All right. So this is the structure of the poem, or this is the structure of an English poet, or sorry, English sonnet, or this is the structure of the sonnet that is written by John Keats. No, no, not John Keats. Oh yes, John Keats. Sorry, I am as confused. Anyway, uh, so that is the structure. We have discussed the structure. We have discussed uh, the poet, John Keats. Now let us move on to discuss the poem. This is the first stanza of the poem. Let us see the meaning of this particular poem. So in the first lines itself, it says, Four seasons fill the measure of the year. There are four seasons in the mind of men. Yeah. Four seasons fill the measure of the year. See, the hining is a measure of the year means the length of the year. Season marina sahi amas hai heaven The first line means that four different seasons make up a year or the length of a but, uh, the length of a year is made up of four different seasons. Like that, so he says season marina sabha dumaina. Like that, in the next line he says there are four seasons in the mind of men. Human being ki mind desu season mari thokna lei hai ni ko. This is uh, by extension in this particular line. John Keats is talking about the human life. All right, he is talking about human life, not only human mind, human life is a season, and what are the seasons? Here, let us go back a slide here and discuss what the seasons are. And what will be the seasons? The first season here that he mentions is spring season. So, Stenja Mari Leiko, Stenja Mari, see the season Mari Limana described us that he is going to describe four different seasons. And in all of these four different seasons, he is going to describe four different stages of human life. Human life is stage Mari. And high river stage Mari Siga Nasaigi, a human being, the field or a mental state to Sumana, discuss the Dweniko in all these four stanzas. So in the first stanza, John Keats is talking about spring season. He will be talking about youth. Human life, the higher than a season, the higher than a spring season. You want to discuss how do say human life, the higher than a youth. And youth key stage, the human being, the kind of walk alone thing. So he's first stanza, as they describe the organi. In the next stanza, he is going to talk about summer. All right, this is summer. And the stage of life that he is describing is young adult. It will be young adult then. 
in the third stanza he is going to talk about autumn season and autumn season he has uh, he has used the season autumn to describe what stage of human life he has used it to describe middle age hanurapagi age uniko middle age described the way and lastly in the last couplet he has described which season he has described winter and as we all know literature that the winter gumba aying ba gumba haira kan de akoi kari ga kari ga kanu to ge kari ga changdam na ge ha kan da mostly we talk about death and this here is old age and subsequently what and subsequently death all right so these are the four different seasons that he will be describing to us these are the four different stages of human life that he will be portraying in this particular poem clear then so let us look at the text again so season na sa koi na side tam ki bolo season marina sahi amasai admaina tawdana human gi mind or human gi life su season mari thokna lai spring season haiba ma summer season autumn haiba ma winter haiba ma and now he is going to describe human life in spring season so what happens to human life in hum, uh, spring season let's see as i've already mentioned spring ดิสปริงซีซันเอสนอนิมัสทูยูดสปริงซีซันไฮเวสนายูดกะจังดัมนาเรคอร์ยูดฮิวแมนบีงกียูดฟุลออยบาสเตสิดาวิลเลียมเ
We know that the writer is John Keats. We know who John Keats is. He was an English romantic poet who uh, was very popular along with Lord Byron and Percy B. C. Shelley. We also talked about the structure of the poem. We know that this is a sonnet and it is written in the Elizabethan format that, or the Shakespearean format. And we also talked about what the poem is about. We know that the poem compares the four seasons of a year to the four different stages of human life. So these are some of the important points that we discussed in today's class. I hope you have all understood the class. Uh, thank you. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for joining my class. Bye bye.